Hey everyone, today we are going to solve the little code question next greater element one. Before we dive into the problem explanation, so let me introduce the membership. You can access medium and hard program which are important for technical interviews, are free for just 90 yen per month. So US dollar is like a 61 cent at August 2025 rate. Compared to Litcode, which costs $39 per month, this is a very affordable way to study. I highly encourage you to check it out. Okay, first of all, let's solve this question with brute force. And create a result variable. This is an empty array. And uh, let's iterate through one by one. So for target in nums1. And uh, next greater should be minus one. So every time we start a new iteration, so next greater initialized with minus one. So minus one is a case where we don't find the next greater element on the right side. And then let's say target found. So when we find the uh, target number in nums two, this flag becomes true. So first of all, false. And then we use a one more for loop. So for num in nums two. And if num current number from nums2 equal target, in the case target found equal true. Else if target found is true, in the case if current number is greater than target, in the case next greater equal num. And then, um, so we have to find the next greater element. So if we find a, a greater number, and then we can break for loop, and then after that, just result dot append and uh, next greater. After that, just return result variable. Yeah, so let me submit it. Yeah, looks good. And the time complexity of this solution should be order of m multiply n, where m is a length of numbers 1 and n is a length of numbers 2. And the space is 1 except result variable. Okay, next, let's optimize the brute force solution. The brute force way is pretty inefficient because every time we take a new target number from numbers 1, so we go all the way back and start scanning nums2 from index 0 again. That's a lot of wasted work. So I started thinking, what if we could store the numbers we've already seen in some data structure and uh, just reuse that information instead of starting over each time? Do you have any idea? My strategy is to use stack to keep track of numbers we already seen. Okay, let's talk about the solution with small example. So nums1 is 3, 1, 2, and nums2 is 2, 1, 3, and the result should be minus 1, 3, 3. So let's see one by one. And the first number is 3. And we find the 3 at index 2 in nums1 and nums2. So in this case, so there is no number on the right side, right? So that's y minus 1. So this is easy. And the next number is 1. So there is a one at index one in numbers two. So in this case, so look at the next position. So next number of next position is greater than current number, right? So that's why three is a one of answer in this case. That's why three. So this is easy, right? So number of next position is greater than current number. We just compare this area, right? But look at this. So next number is 2, and uh, there is 2 at index 0 in numbers 2. So first of all, compare 2 and 1. So in this case, 1 is smaller than 2, right? So that's why we have to compare 2 with 3. Yeah, and then 3 is greater than 2, right? So in this case, um, uh, answer is 3. But uh, there, there is some distance between 2 and 3. So that's why uh, we use stack. And uh, do you come up with how to use stack? As you just saw, if every number is smaller than the number next to it, 
we wouldn't need a stack at all because the next number would immediately be answer, right? Like um, target number is one and the next number three. So three is the uh, answer for one, right? And uh, the reason the answer isn't simply next number is that the next number might be smaller than current number. So for example, current number is two and the next number is one. So in this case, one is not answer for two, right? So this means that the stack is used to keep numbers whose answers aren't determined yet. And uh, we maintain them in decreasing order. When new number comes in, we compare new number with the number on top of the stack. If current number is greater than the top of the stack, then next greater element for that stack number is current number. A stack that managed numbers in this descending or ascending order is called a monotonic stack. Okay, let's see how it works. Since nums1 is subset of nums2, we don't have to care of the nums1. We only use nums2. And let's iterate through one by one. And first of all, we find two, right? And every time, check stack, and this is an empty stack. In this case, just add two in stack. And then move next, and we find one. And check stack, and we have data, two, right? So compare current number with latest number in stack, I mean top of stack. And the current number is greater than um, top of the stack. In that case, current number is answer for uh, top of stack, right? But in this case, two is greater than one. So one is not answer for uh, top, of, top of stack. So in this case, we just add one to stack. And then move next, and uh, we find a three, and uh, check current number with top of stack. So in this case, three versus one, and the current number is greater than uh, top of stack, right? In this case, so three is answer for one. So that's why we pop one from stack and uh, actually, we use uh, one more data structure. So we keep um, target number and uh, answer number, right? So we keep, uh, I think a uh, hash map is simple. So keep um, target number and uh, answer number three, like this. And then, so we have um, another number, right, in stack. So that's why we continue to compare current number and the top of stack. And the next number is two. Two is smaller than current number, right? So in that case, three is also answer for two. So pop um, two from stack and keep like two is answer is three. Then uh, stack is now empty and then just um, push three to stack. Then we finish iteration. And the next step is to create a result variable. And uh, this minus one is for three, right? And uh, this three is for one. And uh, this three is for two. So that's why we iterate through nums one to create an uh, answer array. And uh, every time we check hash map, we create it. And in this case, there's no three, right? So that means we don't find the next greater element on the right side of three. So three is a, a trust index, so no wonder. There's no number here. So that's why if we don't find a, a number in hash map, just um, put minus one. And uh, for one, uh, answer should be three, right? So that's why we put three here. And then for two, uh, answer is three. So that's why we put three for index two. Then return uh, this array. Easy, right? And I'll show you how to put minus one in the next coding section. Yeah, so that is the basic idea to solve this question. So let's jump into the code. Okay, let's write the code. First of all, create a hash map. So next greater equal, we use a default dict. So default dict. And uh, this is a key point. So lambda and uh, minus one. 
So this means that if we don't have key, so we return default value, in this case, minus one. So in the previous section, so we don't have three, right? So in this case, uh, we return minus one. Easy, right? And then create a stack. And let's iterate through nums2 for num in nums2. And uh, check stack while stack is not empty. And uh, top of stack is less than current number num. So in the case, um, current number is answer for the number of top of stack. So in this case, next greater and uh, we should pop top of the stack so pop equal num and after that stack dot append and uh, current number and then return so we create an answer array so we can do like this next greater and uh, num for num in nums1 I think that works. So let me submit it. Yeah, looks good. And the time complexity of this solution should be order of m multiply n, where m is a length of nums2 and n is a length of nums1. And uh, this looks like a nested loop, but uh, be careful. This for loop is for nums2 and uh, this while loop for stack. And the uh, stack has at the most length of nums2. So this works like a 2m, so which is m. And the space is we create a, a hash map and a stack. And uh, both are at most m, right? I mean, length of nums2. So that's why. So space is order of m, except this answer array. So if we include this answer array, so space should be order of m plus n. Yeah, so that's all I have for you today. Please support me with the actions such as comment and hitting like button. I see you in the next question.